Hey guys, this, this is for section two uh, in your earth science textbook. So I'm going to be on page eight. You can go ahead and follow along with me. Identifying materi- minerals. Sorry. If you close your eyes and taste the different foods, you could probably determine what foods they are by noticing properties such as saltiness or sweetness. You can also determine the identity of a mineral by noting different properties. In this section, you will learn about the properties that will help you identify minerals. Color. The same mineral can come from a variety of colors. For example, in its purest state, quartz is clear. Samples of quartz that contain various types of and various amounts of impurities. So just not quite all pure. There's some contamination there. However, it can be a variety of colors. Besides impurities, other factors can change the appearance of minerals. A mineral pyrite, almost often calls fool's gold, normally has a golden color. But if pyrite is exposed to air or water for a long period, it can turn brown or black. Because of factors such as impurities, color usually is not the best way to identify a mineral. So our first property you can use is color. Luster. The way a surface reflects light is called luster. When you say an object is shiny or dull, you are describing its luster. Minerals have metallic, submetallic, and non-metallic luster. If a mineral is shiny, it has a metallic luster. If the mineral is dull, its luster is either submetallic or non-metallic. Different types of lusters are shown in figure one. So this is really going to help you. You're going to need to know the different types of mineral luster. You're going to need to know metallic, submetallic, and non-metallic. Next property is streak. The color of a mineral in powdered form is called the mineral streak. A mineral streak could be found by rubbing the mineral against a piece of unglazed porcelain called the streak plate. The mark left on the streak plate is the streak. The streak is a thin layer of powdered powdered mineral. The color of the mineral streak is not always the same as the color of the mineral sample. The difference between the color and streak shown in figure two is shown in figure two. So here's an example of the color of the streak um, by the mineral hematite. But the streak is always red or brown or red brown. Unlike the surface of the mineral sample, the streak is not affected by air or water. For this reason, using the streak is more reliable <clears throat> than using color and identifying a, mi- a mineral. <clears throat> Cleavage and fa- fracture. Different types of minerals break in different ways. The way a mineral breaks is determined by the arrangement of its atoms. Cleavage is the tendency of some minerals to break along a smooth, flat surface. Figure 3 shows the cleavage patterns of minerals such as mica and halite. Fracture is the tendency of some minerals to break unevenly along curved or irregular surfaces. One type of fracture is shown in figure 4. So just a reminder, you're going to have some vocab here that's going to help you out. Here's figure 3. It's going to talk about um, some cleavage and fractures down here. So it breaks easily. And it shows kind of the angles that it breaks. And here's the curved fracture that they were talking about as well. <clears throat> the next property is hardness. A mineral's resistance to being scratched is called hardness. To determine the hardness of minerals, scientists use Mons or Mohs, I'm not quite sure on that one, hardness scale shown in figure 5. Notice that talc has a rating of 1, and diamond has a rating of 10. So right here, 1 to 10. The greater a mineral's resistance to being scratched is, the higher the mineral's rating is. To identify a mineral being used by Mohs scale, try to scratch the surface of a mineral with the edge of one of your te- one of the 10 reference materials. If the reference material scratches your mineral, the, re- the reference material is harder than your mineral. Density. If you pick up a golf ball and a tennis table ball, which will feel heavier? Although the balls are of similar size, the golf ball will feel heavier because it is denser. Density is the measure of how much matter is in given amount of space. 
In other words, density is a ratio of an object's mass to its volume. Density is usually measured in grams per cubic centimeter. Because water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed, it is used as a reference point for other substances. That's really important. Okay, that's one of your questions. The ratio of the object's density to the density of water is called the object's specific gravity. The specific gravity of gold, for example, is 19. So gold has a density of 19 grams per centimeter cubed. In other words, one centimeter cube of gold contains 19 times as much matter than one centimeter cubed of water contains. Special properties. Some properties are particularly only to only sorry. Some pro properties are particular to only a few types of minerals. The properties shown in figure 6 can help you quickly identify the minerals shown. To identify some properties, however, you need specialized equipment. So this figure is going to help you with this. So fluorescence, calcite and fluorite glow under ultraviolet light. The same fluorite sample is shown in the ultraviolet light top and in the white light bottom. So this is what happens when it's under a glow light and white light. A chemical reaction. Calcite will become bubbly or fizz when a drop of weak acid is placed on it. <clears throat> Optical properties. A thin clear piece of calcite placed over an image will cause a double image. Magnetism. Both magnetite <clears throat> and, I'll try this one, pryotite are natural magnets that attract iron. Taste. Halotite has a salty taste. Radi radioactivity. Minerals that contain radium or uranium can be detected by a ginger counter. So that's going to measure the radioactivity of that. And that's going to be it for section two. So make sure that you're looking at those definitions, what I read to you, and using those figures to help you answer those questions.